Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for the power of your presence, Lord. Thank you for who you are. And Lord God, I pray that you will reveal yourself to us and help us and bless us. In Jesus' name. The children of Israel had crossed the Red Sea miraculously. They had received the divine gift of water. They had received quail and they had received manna on their journey in the wilderness. But they had this condition which caused them always, no matter what God did for them, to end up whining and complaining. They were in the wilderness. They were experiencing the providence and the goodness of God, but they always ended up in the same place. Three times in Exodus, in the early chapters of Exodus, they say to Moses, it would be better if we were in Egypt. Their focus is not on where they're going. Their focus is not on their tomorrow. Their focus is not on the promise that God has made for them. They simply want to go back. And this crisis for them is so deep that they get to a point where they want to get rid of Moses. And the question for them, as it is, for all of us is, could they trust God in the wilderness where all the things that they were accustomed to were not present? And usually, as individuals or as a movement, God takes us to places where the question is, can you trust me? And at Rephidim, they come to that moment, and instead of being able to trust in God, they end up saying, Moses, we really don't like you. We don't like you so much that we are contemplating treating you as we would treat anybody who is a criminal or anybody who has done something that is offensive to our community. They're preparing to stone Moses. And by the way, in the midst of it, they say, where is this God? Even though God delivered them from Pharaoh. Even though God took them by a pillar of cloud and a, a pillar of light through towards the Red Sea. Even though they crossed the Red Sea, they say, where is God? Whenever you and I are on a journey towards self-determination, God usually brings us to a moment like Rephidim where we have to make a choice. Are we going back to Egypt or are we going to look to what God has in store for them? And on this March, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, the question is, are we going to go back or are we going to look forward? I had a visit during the week with someone which challenged me. I, I, the visit started out well. The midpoint was well until the person started to talk about his bank. And he said, when I was going to this bank, all the tellers were white. And now that the tellers are black, I had to change my bank. 
because I don't like the way I'm being served. It was important from my standpoint that the visit ended well. So I tried in the midst of my personal challenges to make the visit go well. But there is constantly this question about competence and quality in our community. We live at a time in America where if you're black or Latino, you're losing economic ground compared to whites. You're losing ground in terms of employment. You're losing ground in terms of income. Even with a black president in the White House, black America, according to the National Urban League, is underemployed or in a state of unemployment that is worse than in a long while. Listen to the wealth gap that exists. The net worth for blacks in America is about $6,000. For Hispanics, it's $7,000. And for whites, it's $110,000. 500. When you are in the world in which we live, the question often will be what is the calling and the mission to the church? And you have to recognize. Wherever you're from, whether you were born in America or outside of America, were, were it not for strong churches, were it not for strong Christians, were it not for leaders who believed in a better tomorrow, most of us would not have the access and the privileges we have today. Yet, when we look on what's happening with churches in Southeast Queens, We've had a couple of meetings with clergy and had a number of visits. You know what most churches are doing? Most churches are looking to open a soup kitchen or a food pantry instead of helping members to build a business or to be self-sufficient. Now, I'm not saying Soup kitchens and food pantries are not helpful. But when our focus is on not lifting or building, our focus is on maintaining, it means we are going back. What if the focus of this church and the other churches was let's educate and let's prepare everyone so that they can step up to take charge of the opportunities which were which are before them. What if this church had a focus on saying instead of being consumers, we are going to help to create something. Do you know what a consumer does? A consumer basically says, I like it or I don't like it. I like the singing. I don't like the singing. I like the preaching. I don't like the preaching. I, I like the food. I don't like the food. A consumer figures that she or he has the right to simply evaluate and to taste, but not to participate. I'm sure you like the music you just heard. But the music you just heard did not come without creation. The musicians created it. The singers created it. 
Everybody put their gifts together, altars, tenors, sopranos, and what else? Bass. And they put it together because creating something is hard. I want to ask you this morning, are you a creator or are you a consumer? And if you are a consumer, then you have gone back to Egypt. You have gone back to slavery. You have gone back to the days where you only see your destiny as dependent upon somebody else simply providing it for you rather than you being integrally involved. The focus on this Dr. King's weekend should be on lifting and building, should be on a concept called empowerment. And empowerment basically says, right here in this church, you have more power and strength than you think you have. Say to the person beside you, you have more power and strength than you think you have. In 1934, W.E. Du Bois, speaking on June 26, addressed the conference of the NAACP. He said to the conference, we have political power. We have power as consumers. We have brain power. We have personal appeal power because we live in proximity to other people. He said, using the terminology in 1934, he says, Negroes can develop in the United States an economic nation within a nation, able to work through inner cooperation to found its own institutions to educate its genius, and at the same time, to keep in touch and cooperate with the larger nation. I want to ask you, are you committed to building something bigger? There's a wonderful book which came out last year, by, written by Dr. Cornel West, and by a German scholar, and I can't find her name, Christa Buschendorf. Together they collaborated on this book called Black Prophetic Fire. And in the book, Dr. West says that what has happened to the black church since the 60s is that people now look on church in terms of I, consciousness, instead of we, consciousness. If you are looking in terms of I, consciousness, then it's about your direct relationship with God, and about God getting you to heaven and about God blessing you and your family and all those who you are interested in. Not that God doesn't do that, but he says when we move to a we consciousness, then our focus is not upon our wealth or our health or our personal status, but instead our focus is on serving the community, lifting others, finding joy, and empowering other people. If Reverend Stryker gets lifted up, I get lifted up. If Elaine Stewart gets lifted up, I get lifted up. If Troy Saunders gets lifted up, I get lifted up. The focus ought to be, let's lift each other, let's build each other, let's raise each other, let's inspire each other. And as we rise, everybody will do better. Now, 
something has happened over the years with most of us, and especially in a church like this where so many people have come from so many places that sometimes we are fearful of each other that we can't lift each other. May I suggest to wherever, to you, wherever you came from, that if we are successful, usually three elements are involved. Usually there's family who stood with us, who sacrificed for us, who paved the way for us. And usually the family was less sophisticated than we are. Ordinary people who had this dream that if they put what they put out there, somehow we would take it and move to another level. The other thing which would be present would be a school which had a teacher or somebody who said if you are educated and if you use your brain power, all kinds of things are happening for you and with you. And then most of us had a church. Whether it was a church in Demerara, whether it was a church in Bridgetown, whether it was a church in Togo or in Nigeria and South Carolina, there often was a church. A church up in the hill country of Jamaica or Haiti or Belize, a church where people prayed and believed and wished for you to do well. When people said, stop slumping over, stand up properly, be straight, look me in the eye, speak well, have some ambition. Anybody ever told you, just have some ambition? May I suggest to you that something has crept back into us which makes us want to go back. We have to confront it. Usually confronting it means being able to name the things which cause us shame, the things which cause us to believe that we can't be all that we can be. We have to confiscate it. We have to confront it. We have to cripple it. We have to find a way of making sure we cremate it and get rid of it. If you can deliver yourself of some of the things from the past, then a present is possible for you. The moment that referred them for the people of God, where could they get Egypt out of their mind and start looking to where God wanted them to go? Can I ask you, what do you want for this church in the next 10 years? What do you want for yourself and this community in the next 10 years? What would the Lord help you to do if you were able to center on God's will and be focused on we, not I? Everybody has a calling. Everybody has a mission. Everybody has a possibility before them. One of the big questions for every group, because to them getting ready to stone Moses, the question is, are you champions in the pews or are you critics? Are you complainers or are you cheerleaders? Are you consumers or are you creators? And I believe that if God is able to put a new spirit within us, we would be a different kind of church. And different churches are needed for this world. Because guess what is there about this world? This world 
with all the technology, all the traditional boundaries and barriers are collapsing. People are being connected all over the place. Ideas are flowing. And the real sense is, is this going to be a living, vital community that is aware of what time it is in and says, God, we are ready for the new day. We are ready for this moment. And out of this church, we are building new things wonder how many of us would start a business this year. Those who start businesses, as hard as it is, develop wealth and independence and income and develop identity and develop a future for themselves. Many of us will say, we can't do that, it's too hard. But if you could free your mind, if you could release yourself to the possibility of owning your future. If you could look around you for the opportunities and the possibilities that are there, if you could have a new mindset and say, God, release me from the fear of failure, then God would move you and me into a new future. On Dr. King's weekend, Will we go back being crippled, being broke, being captured, being castrated, being incarcerated? Or are we going to rise competently and confidently and boldly to do what God has called us to do? If you came into 2016 limping, say to yourself, I'm not going to limp anymore. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to walk because the power of God is with me. If you came here broken in 2016, say to God, God, if you heal me, I will use what I have so that I can be a blessing to others. If you came in to 2016 thinking to yourself, I'm just being kicked around, and I'm tired of being kicked around. I want to, instead of being kicked, I want to be able to walk and to create my own destiny. Ask God. God is a faithful God. God is a mighty God. God is a powerful God. God is a God who honors people who will take him seriously. And in the words of one of our great presidents, stop asking what can First Church do for you. And instead, commit yourself and say, what will I do for First Church? If you make this church strong, you will be stronger. If you make this church a more prayerful place, you will become more prayerful. If you make this church a place that's welcoming to people of every color, of every race, of every background, your life will be enriched. If you make this place a place where people study and take a step up every month, every quarter every year, your life will take a step up. It's time for us to say to ourselves, with God, and in God, and through God, I am going to help to make this better than it was. And may God grant us when we get to Rephidim, where our faith is tested, to make the choice that instead of complaining, I will say the Lord will provide. Amen.